Hi guys. I'm Steve, and I absolutely love Kitchen Nightmares. I am also a huge fan of Gordon Ramsay. From the first moment I watched Kitchen Nightmares, I was hooked. It led me on a journey of reality TV shows with a similar concept. However, Kitchen Nightmares still remain my favorite. You have the American version, and the British version. Out of the two I would have to say, the British version takes the cake. The editing and filming may not have the quality of its American counterpart, but it makes up for it in character and believability. Before I get too deep in the similarities and disparities of the two, I would like to bring your attention to the actual purpose of my video and this series which I'm starting. I have always wondered what happened to many of the establishments and significant people in some of the episodes. I know that many of you have too, so I decided to do some investigating in each restaurant and bring you the scoop. So prepare yourselves for a journey that you will never forget. The What Happened to series. For this video, we will look at the first ever episode of Kitchen Nightmares. In this episode, Gordon visits a restaurant called Bonaparte's in Silston, England. Bonaparte's is a wine bar and restaurant owned by Sue Ray and want-to-be TV chef, Tim Gray. It is worth mentioning that Sue is completely new to the restaurant business. Gordon mentions that in her past, she has sold donkey rides to drywall insulation. She might have gotten information via the grapevine that owning a restaurant is profitable and decided to dabble in it. She is making just over 200 pounds a week, and Gordon mentions that she should be raking in at least 10 times that amount. Tim used to be a dishwasher and convinced Sue to let him run the kitchen. They both agreed that fine dining is the direction they want to push their menu. Not surprisingly it doesn't fit well with the locals. Gordon gets straight to work and asks Tim and Lee the sous chef to go out on the street and invite customers in for a free meal. They only manage to bring in 11 guests as the restaurant's poor reputation precedes it. Gordon witnesses a completely disorganized service and poor kitchen management by Tim. With no clear lines of communication and dishes leaving the kitchen late and incomplete, Sue on trying to save costs, spends her time in the bar upstairs and is unaware of the mess in the kitchen. The next day, Gordon asks Tim to cook him his favorite dish. Tim chooses his scallop dish and doesn't notice that they have gone off. Gordon later gets food poisoning and is shocked that Tim didn't even notice the scallops were rancid. Gordon proceeds to inspect the fridge and finds rotten and moldy food in the fridges and instructs Tim and Lee to clean the kitchen. Gordon notes that there is no communication between Sue and Tim, which is part of the reason the restaurant is in its current state. Another problem is that the restaurant has no clear concept. So Gordon sets out to find an ex-customer to get a better perspective of what they think. Carolina, an ex-customer, says the restaurant has tried everything from live music, cabaret acts and even an internet cafe. He goes to Sue and explains she has all the basics wrong and convinces her to return to rustic comfort food. Tim and Gordon hit the streets armed with Tim's signature dish of scallops and a beef ale pie made by Gordon himself. The people preferred the pie and are impressed that it would be selling for less than eight pounds. Gordon then wants to see what these two chefs can actually do and asks them to cook him an omelet. They both get it wrong, with it being overcooked and rubbery. Gordon then takes Tim to the market where he teaches him to bargain for goods, and they buy some ingredients which Tim would later be cooking. Unbeknownst to him, it will be his own family. Gordon helps Tim prep the dishes for the evening, but Tim still manages to screw it up. He burns the chicken Kiev on the outside, while it still be raw on the inside. He also forgets the croutons and they catch fire. His family is not impressed, but stay silent and don't give him any criticism. Gordon confronts Tim the next day about his performance. For the real Anch Gordon asks the chefs to pick a three-course menu, with their favorite dishes for each meal. Gordon helps them plan for the real Anch by preparing 90% of the dishes in advance. He notices the two chefs never season or taste any of the dishes they prepare. He sets out on a tasting test, telling them they would be tasting different cuts of beef. In reality he feeds them lamb and pork, and both of them get it wrong. For Valentine's Real Anch, the restaurant is fully booked with 48 diners. During the Real Anch Gordon has to constantly push Tim to communicate in the kitchen. 
A few issues arise with them not getting the food out as quickly. However, they pull it together and manage to end the evening with a success. Tim's grandparents are also there, celebrating their 44th anniversary. This time around, they actually loved the food and was really proud of his change. Gordon speaks to Tim after the service and tells him to stick to the changes Gordon had made. Gordon revisits the restaurant for the first time and finds the place completely empty on a Friday night. He goes downstairs to find Tim blasting loud music and finds out Lee has been moved to the bar. Gordon is shocked to see Tim has reverted back to his old ways with rotten food and a dirty fridge. He finds Sue and Tim gets fired. On his second revisit Gordon is shocked to find that Bonaparte's has actually closed. He tries to get a hold of Sue, but she is not picking up his calls. Gordon also discovers newspaper articles of Sue laying false claims against Gordon and the producers that went on to a court case which Gordon ended up winning £75,000 in damages. He locates Tim, who is now exploring other career options. And he says that Sue closed the kitchen down and only kept Bonaparte's open as a bar. He finally locates Sue and she agrees to talk, but off camera. She says she couldn't find anyone for the kitchen and later on shut the place down and is looking for a buyer for the property. She is still convinced that Gordon and his team set her up for failure. She sold the building for £450,000 after Bonaparte's closed in 2005. Now this is where it all gets kind of weird. Let's stick to the restaurant and see what happened to it. After Bonaparte's close, it was opened under new owners as Reflections Wine Bar. That venture also didn't last long, and Reflections closed down in 2009, and was sold for £350,000. Another establishment called Dinero's Wine Bar opened in its place, but this also closed in 2011. On Google Maps, we can see that it's now called The Counting House, as this is the location given to me when I type in the street address. We can also see that this establishment is doing very well, with a 4.7 review rating. As for Tim, he went on his career journey in television, and turned down a job offer from Gordon. Which I think, in my opinion was his worst mistake ever. He worked a few jobs in some restaurant kitchens, but as soon as they found out who he was, he was asked to leave all of them. He also tried out for Big Brother, but was also asked to leave when they discovered his involvement with the show on Kitchen Nightmares. In 2007 Tim was caught driving under the influence, and was banned from driving for two years. He said that he tried to escape an assault by three men earlier that evening. However, he had been caught driving with his headlights off, after he had left the police precinct. He also stated that Kitchen Nightmares and Gordon ruined his life. Which I think is completely unfair towards Gordon and his team. Tim lied his way into becoming a head chef, and was mainly the reason that the restaurant failed. He never stuck to the changes Gordon made, and he also denied the job offer, which in my view, could have been the big break he needed to kickstart his career as a TV chef properly. Tim doesn't want to take responsibility for his involvement and his mistakes, and he is resistant to improving himself and changing where it's needed. He is solely to be blamed for his failures. Not Gordon. Sue on the other hand went into bankruptcy. She was also caught driving under the influence and was banned from driving for two years. I also have to mention that she has been hooked on antidepressants and was relying on state benefits to survive. She, like Tim, blames Gordon for her failures. She was given free publicity and put on the right path, but she pissed it all away and turned around and blamed the lifeline. Running a business is not easy, you will spend most of your time trying to make it succeed and wish you had stayed at your old job. However, when you're doing it right, one day it can really pay off. Sue was simply not doing it right. She should never have let Tim talk her into letting him be a chef. She should have gotten a qualified chef and taken control of her business. Not let the business control her. It's clear from her past that she doesn't follow through with everything and this restaurant proved to be the final nail in the coffin for her financially. It was a sad story of make it, or break it. And she broke. And that is the story of Bonaparte's and its most significant players. If there is anything we can take away from this episode, it's that success lies in our own determination, and how much work we are willing to put in. 
Even if we get all the help we need, and dream of, it won't work, unless we put in the work ourselves. If you have made it this far in the video, I would like to thank you. Consider subscribing to the channel for more great content like this. Catch you on the next one. Bye for now.